So the National Archives is open to the public five days a week. People can either drop in off the street or they can make an appointment, apply for a reader's ticket and come and use the records of the National Archives. We're so used to thinking about somewhere like the National Archives being about historians or researchers or citizen researchers, but actually anybody can come not only to find historical records, but it could be to find out more about your family history. All of those records are here and all we want to do is share them with the Irish public. The Reading Room is a place where members of the public can come and consult records. Technological developments have meant that people can look at a lot of material at home as well. There are databases that are searchable on our website, but most of the older records can only be examined by a researcher actually coming in here. They'd go down uh, to the foyer downstairs and, and uh, the person on duty at the counter would give them an application form. They'd come up here to the reading room and go to the counter with uh, their application. They'd get a little uh, reader's ticket and one of the productions and return staff then goes downstairs and gets the particular file that the person is interested in. Some of our documents are an off-site storage, you know, but there's a facility on our website where people can order these in advance. If people wish to do a, a copy of a file they're, they're looking at, they can fill in a little application form for permission to do that with their phone. And uh, if they need to order photocopies, they can do that as well. There are various other facilities here. There are microfilm readers, there are computer terminals as well. Our staff will assist people by showing them how to actually use the machines. An important element of the National Archives Act was it ensured the preservation of departmental records. I suppose there's a common perception due to the destruction of the Public Record Office in 1922 that very little before that survives. But that's not the case, in fact. We have hundreds of thousands of documents relating to various aspects of life here in Ireland. A lot of the Chief Secretary's Office, the Dublin Castle material, relates to law and order. Dublin Castle, they were very concerned about popular movements in the 19th century. So there's uh, great material on political subversion, right, going right back to 1798. The, the 1848 re rebellion and the people associated with it, the, the Fenian troubles in the 1860s, the land war in the 1880s. So there's a, there, there's a, a great um, a massive material there. And of course, a lot of that material, it's coming from the government side, you know, and you're getting the government view of things, but, but often uh, within it, uh, there are things like um, threatening letters or uh, uh, you know subversive notices you know that, that that give an insight into the other side you've uh, a great sense that uh, sections of the population you know over a long long time you know we're at odds with the existing order you know and and, and it helps you understand why things like the, the, the war of independence actually happened or succeeded you know you know, the smallest amount of information can be of great interest. You realise the worth of the records that you've been working with. There was a, a place called the Dublin Union. It was a successor to the South Dublin Union Workhouse. And we have uh, the registers go up to 1938. And I, I, rem I remember one instance, um, the register proved that the birth mother had remained in the institution with her son. Uh, up, and, up until that, the, the, the time that that son was fostered out. And it was a great comfort for him to know that his mother had been with him for the couple of, uh, the first year, uh, two years of his life, you know. So, so even that fragmentary information, you know, can, can uh, be of great significance to somebody. A lot of my time as an archivist here, I, I, I was out getting records in, you know, from various places. Things like, you know, registers of hospitals, before 1901, you know, there are no complete census returns or, or uh, workhouse registers, you know. Often these are quite poor people who wouldn't be mentioned in any other records. And, and the, these registers actually are proof that, that, you know, that, they, that they existed, you know, and, and, and reflect par part of their life. And they're incredibly, incredibly precious, incredibly precious records. The National Archives is a public resource. 
It's a cultural institution that was created for and on behalf of the people of Ireland to ensure that we conserve and preserve the records of Ireland. But it is our responsibility to ensure that we can reach as broad a public as possible in terms of ensuring that they can come and access our, our documents and our records. So it's freely available and anybody can use it. It's our privilege really to safeguard the memory of the state in the state's records and then to be able to share that with people who, who are interested either coming here or finding um, our records online.